Hey guys, welcome back. Today is an exciting day because we are out in my garden for the very first garden tour of the 2021 year. If you're new here, hi, I'm Bree. I live in Kansas Zone 6B. Our last expectant frost date is around the 15th of April. It's currently April 5th. Um, as I'm filming this. You'll see this a few days later. This is a series that I do monthly on my channel. I did this all last year and honestly, I really enjoy looking back at it and seeing where the garden currently is at. This time last year, my garden was not even half this size. Either way, what's been kind of odd is we haven't had a single low under 45 in weeks. Currently, the last few days it's been 60s and 50s. So I actually have all of my seedlings laying out in the areas they're going to be planted in. So I figured this would be a really good time to go ahead and pick up the camera and show you guys exactly what the garden's looking like. So I've planted a lot of new things. I've added garden beds, I've added trellises. And since the plants are kind of in their homes, but they aren't planted, I figured this would give you a really good visual on what the garden's going to look like here in just a few short weeks. Either way, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So one of the first things you will see when you enter the garden is this Rika blueberry plant. This plant is a three-year-old plant that I ordered online. The company I ordered from is Kansas owned, so I will make sure I link it down below. The Rika blueberry is supposed to be a fast growing, high producing, and very adaptable plant, and that's reasons why I chose it. I'm really excited to be adding more fruit into my garden this year. We really love dried blueberries, so I can't wait to preserve some of my own. I actually just noticed that some of the leaves are popping through on this plant finally, so that's really exciting. Right behind the blueberry, is my garlic bed. I planted this garlic last fall and unfortunately none of my soft necks came up. I bought them last minute from a local nursery because I knew I had a little bit more space but I have no idea what could have gone wrong. Luckily enough all my chestnut red which is the hard neck variety is looking really good. I do need to fertilize this today though. If you didn't know garlic is a heavy feeder and you can actually tell if it needs to be fed by the coloring of the leaves. This garlic really started to take off in this last week now that it's becoming warmer here. So now until the day I harvest it I'll I'll be fertilizing this every two to three weeks depending on how it looks. To our right, we have another new addition, which is my vertical strawberry beds. My husband built these directly to our fence. I have two varieties of strawberries, both of which are ever-bearing, Ozark Beauty and Eversweet. Unfortunately, I did have a problem with the squirrels stealing one right as I planted it out. I forgot to put my fake owls out to help them stay away. I also use fake snakes throughout the garden as well. I planted the Ozarks about two weeks ago and the Eversweets yesterday. They are bare root plants that I ordered from a place up in Oregon. I will also link them below. Below the straw strawberries we have this cute sleeping English bulldog named Cuddy aka my garden watchdog. He doesn't do well at the whole watchdog thing but he does make good company. To the left is our insect netted hoop house and this is where I have all of my cabbage and a few iceberg lettuces. I alternated between red and green cabbage this year. I have had some success with green cabbage over the fall. This is my second attempt at cabbage this spring. I'm hoping it just doesn't get too hot too quick before these can fully mature. Now here is another one of our new additions. If you've been following me for a while now, you would have known I've had cloth planters here for a while. They are officially moved and now I have these two galvanized steel garden beds. This is the same garden bed that I bought last fall that holds the garlic. It used to be $65 and now for some reason it's gone up in price and as of lately, I've seen it for as high up as $100. I still will link it. I still think it's a good deal compared to the price of wood right now, so I will have it linked down below. But stay tuned because I also have another really good option coming up. So in these two new beds, I have five out of my six pepper varieties growing. I'm planting bell peppers, paprika, jalapeno, banana, serrano, and cayenne this year. All three of my pepper beds will have two Oyas in them. And if you haven't heard of an Oya, let me give you a quick rundown real fast. So this is something I stumbled on during the fall and I'm really excited to incorporate it into my garden. It's a clay vessel that helps with watering. It can cut down water usage as much as 70%, roots grow deeper, produce higher yields, improve the soil structure, and it can help with weeds. I'm actually really excited to be incorporating these this year. It's my first year and I can't wait to keep you guys updated on the results I see versus previous years. One last thing when it comes to peppers is I pruned off the tops of one plant from each variety. This is something I've never done, but I see so many people do it. Once your pepper plants have more than four leaves, you can actually top them. And this essentially helps create more of a bushier plant instead of one that is taller. I've grown peppers every single year and honestly, I've had amazing harvest. So I'm really interested to see in the comparison. And of course, I will let you guys know throughout the season. Then over here to my left, I have this really cute kitty in the window named Khaleesi and if she didn't have really bad allergies I'd probably have her out here with me. 
Moving forward, we have the two garden beds we planted together two weeks ago. Everything has been doing really well. I didn't have any of my peas come up, so I did replant those yesterday. These are some really old seeds, but I did plant some of these seeds in the fall and they did fine, so we will see. I did just notice my kurabi sprouting and also my radishes. My onions seemed a little stressed at first, but now they're starting to rebound and showing signs of growth. And my romaine lettuce is looking beautiful along with the broccoli and the kale. Now for the large space to our left, which was last year's fall garden, but is now our official tomato area. This year I'm trying something new. I'm using cattle panels to trellis my tomatoes since I wasn't the biggest fan of tomato cages last year, even though I still will be using some of them this year. This area took a lot of work to get looking like this, but I think it's going to be something that will work really well. In the front of this, I also have those large cloth planters that I moved and those will be holding more tomatoes as well. I'm also planting basil and marigolds in this area as well to hopefully help with hornworms this year, so fingers crossed. I feel like I've said this about every area so far, but honestly, I think I am most excited about this area of the garden. This is my trellis tunnel. This isn't fully done. We still need to get the garden beds made for this, but we are officially calling this trellis Ellis, and I will be referring to that for the rest of the year. I am planting my cucumbers, loofah, and cantaloupe on these. I also have my front trellis that you guys saw last year that held all of my cucumbers. And this year I'm actually going to be doing pole beans on that instead of bush beans. I still have bush beans that I plan on direct seeding throughout the garden space, but I think I'm going to really enjoy doing pole beans over just doing full on bush beans because I can do so much more in a small space and that's one reason why I love vertical gardening so much. I'm sure throughout this space you have noticed all of my planters and cloth planters throughout the garden. These are mostly for different flowers such as cosmos, zinnias, sunflowers, chamomile, marigolds, and hyssop. Others will be holding pink celery and also herbs. This year I'm adding parsley, peppermint, and oregano. I already have catnip, sage, rosemary, and thyme established from last year. My thyme did flower and I think it's absolutely beautiful so I've just been leaving it for a few more weeks for the bees. And speaking of bees, this was something I really wanted to make sure I did this year was leave some of the weeds to flower for the bees to help attract them back to our yard before all of my flowers were ready and established. When my husband mowed this last weekend, I asked him just to keep the area in the backyard that we don't go around just so they can enjoy it. Most weeds are bees first sources of food so keep that in mind. It's actually really important. The one cloth planter I did want to tell you guys about is this new one I got from Bootstrap Farmer. Their cloth planters are really good quality compared to the ones I've previously bought in the past. You can really tell just how much thicker they are. This big 100 gallon bag is only $30. It's not as big as an 8x4 garden bed but I do think it's a really good option for anyone looking for something cost efficient. I don't know if you guys remember or not, but I'm going to put a video on the screen here of the wild sunflowers I had, and I was really hoping that I could have them again this year because I just absolutely love them. They continue to bloom all summer long. I did go ahead and seed save the seeds, hoping that I could just, you know, plant them myself, but I did allow a lot of them to go ahead and go to seed, and I just sprinkled them throughout the soil right here, and I'm thinking these might be the sprouts of that sunflower. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Lastly, we have my compost area here. I've officially moved four cubic yards of soil twice this year, which is the most I have ever done. We built out this composting area last year and it's been working great. We should have our very first batch here done pretty soon. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the garden before everything gets crazy. It'll be really fun to jump back to this video here in a few months just to see how much everything has changed. Thanks for joining today. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.